Hello, and welcome to Tea Time with Torlop. Today's episode is going to be a little different than my usual thing. Usually I talk about old games in Tea Time with Torloth and have one pot set up for new games. Uh, today I picked three smaller games, well not three smaller games, but three different games that I played this week. One of which being a beta, and two of which being full games, but we'll talk about that in a minute. First up though, today's tea is a delicious white tea from uh, Plum Deluxe. So we're going to start with our first game today, and that is Bright Memory. Uh, this game was on, came out of nowhere. It was recommended heavily on Steam to me by the algorithm. So I'm like, whatever, $5.35, let's go. I'm going to say for a game that was made by one person, this is pretty impressive uh, using Unreal. So... I don't know how many of these assets are his own or bought from a store, but uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it's very short. Um, I finished the first episode in, I believe, an hour and a half, and there's no more right now. It came out of early access on the 25th? It was 25th. Yes, it came out of early access on the 25th, but I played it on the 26th in the morning and uh, beat it that morning when I had a whole pot of tea. I believe it was Earl Grey. The game seems to be setting up a story that I have no idea what's going on. Uh, name dropping. They're doing that thing like, these characters know each other because they know each other by first name. I'll have to see what happens in episode two. Um, combat was interesting. I think this shotgun was kind of Meh, I'd rather use the machine gun or the pistol. Um, the way they did ammo drops and other things like that are very interesting. Um, there's a dash. And uh, you can't dash forward. After playing Doom Eternal and using the dash to be aggressive or to push aggression, it's not great. Uh, there's a sword that has like throwing attacks and some other cooldowns that I had trouble hitting in the heat of moment because I couldn't rebind any of the keys. Uh, I use a Steel Series, what is this, a Rival 650 wireless? Yes, 650 wireless. And it has these buttons on the side, which I use regularly for every game. I use just at this middle one here to, to uh, melee and the back one to something else. So in Doom, that's like my melee. That's my chainsaw, and that's the crucible. I have them on quick keys so I can just get them. Uh, when a game doesn't let me rebind keys, it throws me off. Uh, this was a great first step for this game, and I'm going to give this the... This is another new thing that I was planning to do for a while. Uh, this game is going to get an award. I'm going to call it the More Award, where I want to see more. I want to try more. This is an interesting first step, and I want to see what this dev does with the next episode. So I'll get back to you on that one when it comes out. Okay, game two on the chopping block is from Ninja Theory. Uh, yes, the creators of Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade, as it's also called. I think this is the title. It's Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Um... This is a pretty big departure from that, and I, I have played Hellblade uh, not super long. I thought it was pretty good, but uh, the voices whispering in my ear on my really nice pair of headphones was enough to make me go, no thanks, I'm done. It's more unnerving, but anyway, that's Senua's Sacrifice, we're not talking about that. We're going to talk about Bleeding Edge. This game is an interesting concept, and one that I have to say I'm not on board with. Uh, it's a melee-focused, arena-based melee fighting game, I believe on the Microsoft Store, which I can open up here. It is labeled as, go to the star page, fighting which 
I, I, that's pretty accurate. Um, this is a $40 release uh, available on Steam and the and Xbox Game Pass. And the Xbox console, of course. Uh, I played it on the PC. It was clearly built for a controller. I tried to play keyboard mouse, but uh, it was not great. And it's trying to be something, and it is a hard game. When they say teamwork and communication is required to uh, win, they're not kidding. If you're not grouped up, you're gonna die. The other problem is there's a lot of downtime and the way the rounds work is you have, I think there's two modes right now. I've only played two. There's like uh, go get drops and control point holding. So it's like control points are active and they become deactive for a set number of time and then they're reactivated. Maybe not the same ones, different ones. The map seems to switch it up, but you have to know which ones are going on the heads up display. I kind of like this, and at the same time, I kind of don't. Uh, I think respawns are a little too punishing, and there's good, there's a lot of balance changes that need to happen for this game to be fantastic, or to be as good as other games in the genre. I'm not trying to be like Overwatch is the best hero shooter that exists, but it's one of the longer lasting ones, and it's one that I play regularly, so it's the easiest one to compare it to. Um, these characters are cringy. Um, the ninja character in general makes me think of like that kid that's like, eh, I am the ninja dude. I'm going to do whatever. And it's just like, no, just stop. You're, you're, oh, it tries to do some things and it does them pretty good. I am going to, however, say that even though I'm not a fan of this game, I can see that there are merits involved and in its creation, what it wanted to do, what it wants to be. But I just can't... If you're into to the hero-based fighter, you got four friends that just want to beat the crap out of other people. Go ahead. It's, it's got potential. It definitely has potential. And I hope by the time uh, the Xbox One... Uh, Xbox Series X, I should apologize, is out. Uh, this game will be much more polished when I think there's going to be a huge influx of players coming to the Xbox brand. Um, this game gets the illustrious and uh, controversial Eggplant Award. You can figure out what you want it to mean, but to me... I hate eggplants. I can't stand them. But other people love them. So that's what it means to me. This game is great for other people. Editing note. The last section of this video was completely corrupt and unusable. So um, rather than get all set up and record video files and then have to re-encode them and do all sorts of crazy things, I decided just to do a voiceover here because it's Thursday and this thing's got to be out Saturday. So I apologize. So the last game I want to talk about in today's tea time is Resident Evil Resistance with the beta. I didn't get to play the full game. This is the multiplayer mode that's going to be attached to Resident Evil 3. I got to be honest, this mode is a great first step. Uh, it's fun. It's the right length. I find that other games like this, uh, they're too long or they're too crazy. So anyone who's played games like Dead by Daylight or Friday the 13th or whatever that other one was called, Death Garden, which I thought was a cool game, but uh, this one, it's very different because there's a card, there's like a deck and you get so many spawn points and you have like an ultimate card that comes up in your deck. So you kind of want to like blow through as many cards as you can so you can get to your mega card in this case in the demo it's mr x so i'm assuming there'll be another one that's uh nikolai or one of the other maybe wesker and you'll get different 
Resident Evil big monsters. But maybe William could be one, but I digress. Uh, the Mastermind also can control some zombies, not like dogs or anything like that. Dogs or lickers, I think, you can't control, but like regular zombies, tough zombie, and there's a security zombie they can control. So the Mastermind seems to be in control of a lot of the experience that the other players are going through, and it's kind of like a DM mode. There's a couple of things people didn't seem to understand about how the survivor section of this works. So the rules for survivors are they can, like, you're just trying to eat their time. So if one gets downed or killed, they will respawn with a 30 second penalty to time. But every time they do things like solve a puzzle, kill a monster, they get time bonuses back. So it's like this balancing act of you hit them or your monsters hit them, they lose time. But every time they work as a team, heal each other or do whatever, they gain time. I like what they're going for and I think it's interesting. Uh, a couple problems I see are a lot of people, I found this a lot on Xbox when I was playing it. People did not want to work together. They were not cooperative at all. I don't know if it was just a bunch of like of people that were younger or if it was just an influx of people that didn't really care because it's a beta, right? And there's always people that can be like that and they just don't care. I think this is really cool and hopefully it gets a really nice community and maybe it gets split off outside of Resident Evil 3. Because I know a bunch of people who probably would be really down to play this, but not be down to pay the full price. 60 US dollars for Resident Evil 3 if they're not even going to play Resident Evil 3. I'm very cautiously optimistic with this. I love Resident Evil, but at the same time, I don't think this is perfect. I would, uh, if they branch it off into its own game or expand on the idea, I would like a PvE mode with uh, preset events, kind of like Resident Evil Outbreak, which is one of my favorites. Playing as the survivors, each character has a active ability and what they call a fever ability or ultimate. None of these seem to be incredibly overpowered except for Valerie's, since Valerie is, hers is a big heal. It's an AOE heal, it's really good. Uh, I've played almost every survivor available on the beta, but from the cover art of the mode, there seems to be at least six survivors and they said Jill will be one of the survivors playable at some point. Your mileage may vary on these games, but uh, I absolutely adore Resident Evil Project Resistance, and I hope if any of you are playing it, uh, you will uh, come play with me. I have um, set up a Discord server. I've had it for a while, but I haven't really used it yet, and I'm going to start streaming stuff on Mixer. I have my Twitter. You can tweet at me with whatever you want. Honestly, I really just hope to be able to play with people. I'm going to have links below for my Twitter and the uh, Discord. And I'm going to put the Discord up on my Twitter also, so don't worry, I'll pin that to the top. I'll also put a link to the white tea I was drinking from Plum Deluxe. They're not a sponsor or anything, but I kind of just want to give them a shout out because honestly, they make great tea. And uh, I hope everyone stays safe in this trying time. Stay safe out there, everybody. And I hope to see you on the Discord and hear you on Twitter. And see you next week for the Resident Evil 3 one pot. Matane!